fearless, optimistic, trusting, open-minded, fiercely independent, a magnificent chronicler, politically astute and humble, are all words that came up when we decided on this year's recipient. And the award goes to Dervla Murphy. Ever since her first book was published in 1965, Dervla has been a constant bestseller at Stanford's. Through her writing, she continues to inspire readers of all ages to travel and remain open-minded to new experiences. She is considered a legend amongst travel writers and the travel writing world. Her knowledge and passion for learning about the world has had such a positive influence on the genre, and we couldn't be pl more pleased to present her with this accolade. In her memoir, Wheels Within Wheels, she writes, for my 10th birthday, my parents gave me a second-hand bicycle and Papa sent me a second-hand atlas. Already I was an enthusiastic cyclist, though I had never before owned a bicycle. And soon after my birthday, I resolved to cycle to India one day. I have never forgotten the exact spot on a steep hill near Lismore, where this decision was made. Halfway up, I rather proudly looked at my legs, slowly pushing the pedals around, and the thought came, if I went on doing this long enough, I could get to India. It's such a joy to read those words written by Dervla aloud. It's no wonder her books hold a special place in her readers' hearts and also on the shelves of the Stanford shops. I now have a message to read out from John Murray, Dervla's friend and former publisher. John tells us, Dervla delivered the typescript of her early travels arriving at 50 Albemarle Street on her long-suffering bicycle, direct from India. From that moment, she revealed herself as a true original and fearless traveller. Nurtured by my father and edited by my mother, Dervla and at some time her daughter, Rachel, became a part of the Murray family. In some ways, Stanford's was a second home to her, where she spent much of her time seeking out maps to the more obscure areas of the world in preparation for her new exploits. She is without doubt a worthy recipient of the Stanford Travel Writing Award. Well done, Dervla. And now here are some people who would also like to congratulate Dervla. I can't think of a more worthy recipient of the Edward Stanford Outstanding Contribution to Travel Writing Award 2021 than Dervla. Her 26 books cover well over 30 countries and they're all meticulously researched and beautifully crafted. But the thing that really makes Dervla's writing is something you can experience just as easily around the table in London or in Ireland with her. And that is her inveterate curiosity and her incredible conversational talent as a conversationalist. She goes to Afghanistan, talks with farmers and politicians. She speaks to people across Africa and through uh, the, the Balkans and brings those voices back for us to read and digest and understand their point of view. Thank you, Dervla, for being you and for those conversations. It is our extraordinary pleasure to be an, an honour uh, to be Dervla's publishers and to an extraordinary and happy extent uh, became um, have become and delight in being her friends, getting to know her children and her grandchildren, walking with her in Ireland, staying with her, being cooked for her and trying to keep up with the extraordinary, headstrong, passionate um, mind alert to all of the world's problems and issues. And that's really what I want to say about Dervla is her complete political passion to try and improve the world through getting to know it on the ground. Boots on the ground. Ignore what you're told um, on the television by the politicians. Find out for yourself. She has got veracity in her bones. Every word that she writes is absolutely known, studied and understood. The other thing that makes her totally exceptional 
within the confraternity of travel writers is her independence. She's never accepted any of the sort of backsheesh um, silver linings that go with travel journalism as you paint up a, a holiday for magazines and, and uh, newspapers. She's true to herself and to her own mission and she is in that way a most extraordinary unique talent that I'm delighted we are honouring. Thank you. I'm so happy that Dervla has got this award. She really is a true original and just such an inspiration to so many of us and not just women, men as well and not just as a traveller but as a writer too. Whatever she's done, she's always forged her own path. So when she set off to India back in 1963 on her bicycle, people like her just weren't doing things like that. She essentially democratised adventure travel and showed us that we didn't need a fancy bike or special gear. So thank you, Dervla, and congratulations. You really did blaze a trail. Dervla, to say that the honour you are receiving today is deserved would be an understatement. It would be easier, I think, to say where she hasn't been than where she has. The list is endless. And all described in books that are wonderfully unpretentious, shiningly honest, accessible, um, a delightful, earthy humour and charm. The humour, I think, always um, waiting for you. It's uh, in her case, I think, a, a kind of modesty which gives perspective to things. The style, in other words, is the woman. She's always rejected the adjective that comes most easily to mind in her case, which is brave, uh, courageous. She doesn't like it. And maybe fearlessness is the better, better word to describe her, because I think ever since her earliest days, when in that extraordinary book, um, Full Tilt, which described her bicycling to Delhi overland, she has uh, recorded danger with a kind of insouciance, almost as if it's part of the business. Dervla Murphy is unique among travel writers, or perhaps, perhaps among any writers, in the range and the focus of what she's done. And the honour that you're receiving today, Dervla, comes, I know, with the deep admiration of us all. Hello to Dervla Murphy, my old friend who is accumulating lifetime achievement awards like uh, other people accumulate optimists. And I'm sorry, Dervla, there'll be no Guinness this time, but I've got very happy memories of our last meeting when you got your last Lifetime Achievement Award. And congratulations. No one deserves it more than you, and I'm absolutely thrilled. Hello, Dervla. It's Michael here, um, congratulating you on winning the Edward Stanford Award for Outstanding Contribution to Travel Writing. I mean, you should have won it year after year. You're so consistent. Um, and your books always come absolutely up to the mark. You've been a great inspiration, I think, to many travel writers. And I think what you have is this mixture of sort of open honesty um, combined with fearlessness. You will ask anybody anything and they will open up to you. And it's through those people and those conversations and that ability to give yourself to the people you're talking to, which I think makes for great... Uh, revelations about places you go to. It makes you feel as a as a reader that you are there with you, um, finding out what life is, is really like. There's no sort of show business or showbiz, showboating about it. It's, it is just a very, very good way of showing us how people live all around the world. And thank you again um, for all your hospitality to me in the past, your inspiration to me. There's only one travel experience that I, I feel I should apologise to you for never having taken up, and that was your offer of skinny dipping in the black water <laughs> one morning all those years ago. Still, there's still time. So I'm very, very happy to have been awarded this magnificent gold. And... I have the fondest memories of going to Stanford at the very beginning of my travels beyond Europe when I needed all sorts of maps to get me from Istanbul to Delhi and then later even more complicated maps to 
walk through Baltistan and through Ethiopia and the Sibians. There were virtually no maps in those days of those areas except at Stanford's. So it's a very nice link to have this globe. 